So I'm super excited about the idea of creating virtual environments as a place where students can connect, um, share ideas, especially with this kind of remote learning experience we're dealing with. But I think one of the challenges is the continuous use of kind of these flat video calls. And while they can be super helpful, I think there's a ton of potential in kind of congregating in virtual spaces. So let's check out this demo build in Frame VR to see what that could look like. So here we are in a Frame VR setting. So I wanted to mock this up so we could kind of start to think about this as a virtual classroom environment. So let me start over here. So because this is the a portion of the room where you can actually share your camera or share your screen, what I did was I added all these little circles just as kind of markers where students could go in order to kind of have some organization when it's time to meet and congregate in that direct space. So to do this, first I went into editing mode, you can see here, and then under my inventory, I wanted to add to my inventory, I did add image, and then you get this pop-up and I just did a Google search for white circle. Now once you find that image, what you can do in your inventory, when you scroll down under your images, you can see all the images that I've grabbed. And here's another one, for example, this green circle that I used. So there's the green circle, but you'll notice it's flat. It's not in the right kind of space that I want. So when I'm in editing mode here and you tap on that, first I'm going to clean up the rotation because I want that to be flat. Now what I'm doing is grabbing it with my mouse and I'm pulling down with the trackpad in order to push it into the floor. Let me back up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab and drag that down until it disappears. Now I'm just gonna change the rotation a little bit and notice how it disappears and right when it pops back up, now what I'll use is the directional arrows to place, place that where I want it. So all I did was just place these in the right area. Let me bring that right back up again. So that's kind of one strategy that could be really helpful because if we don't have some sort of, some sort of guidance in terms of where the students are gonna go, they might not know like where to congregate. We want them to stay out of each other's way. And then it simulates that experience of being able to turn and even talk or look at someone. So there's kind of one little tip. What I did up here as well, in terms of this little poster, all I did was create that in Google Slides and then downloaded that as an image and then just uploaded it. So in my inventory, I did add image, but this time I uploaded that image from Google Slides, dropped it on here, changed the location, changed the angle until I was happy with that to kind of indicate to students like this is where you, where you will come when it's time to gather. Now let's take a look over here. We're going to add a kind of layer to this. So what I'm going to do actually is move this last green spot as another space for a student to work. So what I did over here was I set up kind of a station one breakout. So whereas we might meet over here as a whole group at first, on this portion of the room, I might say, okay, these five students, you're gonna be part of station one, head over to station one to get started. And as you can see as well, I can have stations set up all over the room, but I'll show you how I built this one. Really similar process. I open this overflow menu, make sure that I'm in editing mode, and then in my inventory, I wanted to add an image. So I went to add image. I did a Google search for last supper, and then I was able to find the last supper. You can see right here, and I simply added that. Now to get it onto the wall, I did the same setup. I changed the rotation until that was flat along the wall. And then if you click, and if you arrow back, right, I'm changing where that is in the room. So if we were to walk away from this for a second, see how it's not where we want it anymore. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm arrowing forward until that just disappears through the wall. And now it's locked onto the wall where I want it to be. I added a little computer finger to indicate that this is going to be clickable in just a moment. And then down below, same setup. I went to Google Slides. I made this little station one prompt uploaded the image and then added it to the wall with the same strategy of clicking and moving forward until it's in the location that I'd like. Now I really, another helpful feature here is notice down below, you can have multiple scenes in frame. So this is scene one of two and all I did was add a new scene. Now with this image, when I'm in editing mode, I made that image link out to a scene. Then I built out scene two. So if I actually leave editing mode, this image now becomes clickable. And when I click, it brings me to scene two. 
So I might say to the group, for example, hey, group one, head over to your station, get a sense of what you're going to talk about, what you're going to work on. And then when you click, it brings them to scene two. And let's take a look over here. And now I've done a really similar build out. And this is for station one. I built the same idea of like, hey, here's the place where you can congregate. We have the painting that we're looking at. I put the same prompt on the wall. And then if you'll notice over here as well, what I did here was I added a screenshot and that screenshot actually, let me go into editing mode to show you, that screenshot links out to a smart history site, which has a video to give them some insight into the Sistine Chapel. So now this, or excuse me, the Last Supper. So now what the kids can do, I'm out of editing mode, if they click on this, would you like to open the link and jump out? Sure, I can jump out and watch that video. No, thanks, I'm gonna stay here. And now they're in their little breakout space just for station one. Now, the, you as the teacher, you could obviously join the breakout space as well. Now, what I did over here, I just made it really clear how they could get back. Obviously, on the bottom, they can navigate back. But I might say, okay, return to the main room every five minutes. They click, they're back in the main room. And now we might do some congregating in the main gathering space where I can share my front facing camera or I can share my screen if I want to, to provide some instruction. And then again, I would just do this kind of setup all over the room to prep kids where they can click and break out. Now, the reason why I did break out to space is while the audio is kind of directional and tied to where you are in the room, I just wouldn't want it to be too loud you could totally keep everyone in the same space with if you just had a handful of students, but that would just be one strategy. Um, one other thing that I think is just awesome about this space, if we were exploring Renaissance art, it would only make sense to put the Sistine Chapel on the ceiling here and have that as a breakout space as well. So I really hope this video works. I plan to make a series of these videos about different ways to think about using virtual reality and virtual spaces. And I think Frame VR is an awesome step to consider integrating um, virtual reality, virtual spaces, and virtual meeting spaces and experiences for your students or even for a remote learning environment.